Welcome to a new video and I will be sharing my latest thoughts and insights around what I think is really happening in terms of China's crackdown, the Evergrande situation and well, possibly some pretty big catalysts in terms of um, the valuations of Chinese equities and stocks in general. So stay tuned for that. So this video is based on my latest Dongxi Patreon community post if this all comes true. And by the way, if you're becoming a patron, you will get regular extra content from time to time as well as long reads here. And if you're part of the 10 US dollars tier, you will get even daily content around NEO and other stocks and my trade signals. And so shout out and thanks to all the Patreon supporters who help this channel to stay independent and do some of this background and thorough research that I'm going to show now. So it's fair to say that some of the voices are coming out hinting an end of the crackdown. So some of the media reporting is finally calming down a bit and becoming more open to the idea that Chinese tech will not be affected as much as initially thought on the bottom line, so meaning on the business performance. And this also results that UBS, HSBC, as well as that I've previously mentioned already that BlackRock also is overweight on China. And so you could say like, well, the situation is kind of calming down and smoothening a little bit. But I already said like in the first place, this whole crackdown and fear around what's happening in China seems to me uh, way over the top in my point of view and it's largely even kind of a misinterpretation of what is really happening and so in this video I will give more evidence to that and also show more about those double standards in my views. So let's jump into this post which is around the notion that when watching Tiger and Futu closely I got the idea that this whole Evergrande situation could actually um, really foster a new thinking in the Chinese leadership, but also in just the ordinary retail investors. And this new thinking could be about the topic of investing. Previously, Chinese used to buy houses because there was money to be made. And that's one of the least restricted um, asset markets in China. And that worked out pretty well before this whole issue around Evergrande. And now the really important thing here is that I think uh, we see the need for diversification and not only from the retail investor side but also from the government side and essentially I think this will lead to a big opening up of China for the capital markets. And this is where I found new evidence that I think is pointing exactly towards this. And this is around an article here which I have now auto translated coming from a um, state owned um, source here CCTV and um, it is about um, that just recently, so this article has just came out on the 22nd of October, um, that there has been a annual meeting around the topic of a personal pension plan that um, needs adoption for the personal accounts. And it is around the establishment of a personal pension system supported by taxation and policies and the standardization of a development of personal commercial pension financial products as well as offerings in the area of pension financial services and therefore creating and promoting the introduction of such relevant policies as soon as possible. So as a rough explanation, this is looking to establish something similar than a 401k or a Roth IRA or IRA, whatever you call it, either uh, supported by the employer or uh, just a private account, um, something similar like this. Um, actually, we don't even have uh, goods of such services and systems in Germany, but I know in the US uh, they are quite common. And now China might be looking into creating such kind of a system uh, with new rules, regulations and tax incentives in order to allow their citizen to um, save for their retirement and also use additional assets, not only investing in houses um, in order to um, create wealth and diversify their investments. And so if this is going to happen, and of course, right now, this is purely speculation, just this article that I've now found here, but uh, I'm going to discuss now those prospects. If this is going to happen, then I think this is going to be huge. This will create trillions of dollars flowing into equities mostly Chinese equities, those that are listed in China mainland, but possibly also those that are listed in the US and beyond. And so I found this interesting article in the Financial Times, which is also discussing what happens if Chinese household wealth is unleashed onto the world. This article is from July uh, 2021 and is also talking about something which I mentioned before, that there is the idea that up to 50,000 US dollars 
in budget would be permitted to take out of the country annually to invest. And as we know, China's saving rates is one of the highest in the world, much higher than in most of the advanced economies um, in general. And so this article states that the estimates are that the Chinese households will have around 46 trillion of investable assets by 2025 an amount equivalent to the entire US bond market. So in case if 10% of households are investing 50K abroad, HSBC is calculating that that would amount to 2.4 trillion. So we're speaking of a middle class of up to 500 million people that is getting richer and richer in assets, which now obviously needs a way of diversification and against the backdrop and the context of what's happening with the Evergrande situation and where even the government should come to the conclusion um, now that um, they cannot just invest it in the housing market. Um, relying only on the housing market for GDP growth is also not the best idea. And so with the article that I found around the pension system, as well as this notion uh, that China has all of those assets, um, if all of these things are coming together, this could create a massive investment vehicle um, with trillions of um, dollars uh, flowing into the economy and into investment. And where would this money go? Well, first of all, this would happen in steps and gradually. So now we're seeing the first pilot projects that are happening uh, where um, the Chinese exchanges are also opening up to foreign investors, by the way, but now become more uh, important, um, particularly, of course, um, Hong Kong, the stock exchange in Hong Kong, but also uh, Shenzhen, uh, Shanghai and uh, what is planned Beijing uh, will all become more important um, from a Chinese perspective for investing. Uh, but that, well, it still opens just the world to mainly the mainland Chinese assets. And so this article also talks about the so-called Wealth Connect program, uh, which is a symbolic milestone and which allows um, in a pilot scheme that um, some households in some of the greater Bay Area, which includes Shenzhen, Guangzhou and so on, are able to invest in some low to medium risk funds domiciled in Hong Kong. And this will give them access to markets in the US and elsewhere. And as I mentioned before, also offshore investors can start to buy mainland products through this scheme, which is linking Chinese stock as well as the bond markets to Hong Kong. So this should be just the first step. Um, Hong Kong is playing an important role there. Maybe in the beginning, just limiting the investment to uh, some of the low risk um, products and services. But um, opening it up to Hong Kong in the first place and also the first um, overseas assets. And so you know that uh, companies that are listed also on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, like for instance Alibaba, like JD.com, like Axpong, I think already now they are uh, benefiting from the trend that um, people who are closer to what is really happening in China have a better understanding of these companies. And so I think these companies should be at the core benefiting from such kind of opening up. And I think ultimately um, this will step by step be expanded further um, beyond Hong Kong and also in uh, maybe less restricted ways, um, allowing other more risky investments and ultimately unlocking trillions of US dollars, maybe through some of these uh, pension funds that will be set up, but also allowing investors to privately di uh, diversify and make their own decisions. And these trillions will, I think, lift all of the boats um, together, uh, because where will those investors uh, typically invest, of course, in those companies that they know that they're using. And I think this will most likely also change the valuation of US listed Chinese stocks in the very long term, because um, right now, of course, these are mostly investable by foreign investors. Very rarely Chinese are able to open accounts or transfer USD to be able to invest in stocks like NIO. But in the future, um, this will be open to everyone. And so whereas these companies are now uh, trading at a discount because people don't understand the crackdowns happening, they have fear and uncertainties around Chinese stocks. And because of all of these media fear campaign around China in general, um, this is um, really leading to those um, depressed valuations. But I think this cannot longer hold true in this very long term should China open up their capital markets like I am yeah, seeing the first signs here. And so this is a very 
long-term play here but of course um, if we're looking at the facts like that recently Goldman Sachs was approved to 100% own their China entity and we see that many more of those big names like BlackRock, Fidelity have either applied for licenses or are already in operation of having licenses for foreign ownership of mutual fund management in China then I think you can clearly see how yes in the media everyone talks about how things are going south but uh, in the background what's really happening is that these large institutions who are now starting also to become overweight on China again are actually looking to get a piece of this pie and that's a huge pie and if everything is playing out right this you can be sure that they are the first uh, to have their funds um, uh, succeed by this and so what I'm trying here at this channel is to tell you a different story than you possibly see in the media and uh, my thoughts around how this may ultimately play out maybe not in the short term but in a very long term uh, regarding this whole Evergrande and China crackdown situation where most of the media is still doom and gloom about Beijing and a potential collapse but by the way if you look at some of the authors here this is written by Lynette Lopez which famously said that Tesla's gigafactory in Shanghai may never produce cars and she's talking about how CEOs are running for the exit to avoid the government's ire whereas in the same time in the US we have the introduction of a tax on billionaires unrealized gains so how is this not an incentive to actually never push the valuation of your a company in the US anymore uh, in order to avoid actually paying taxes on unrealized gains on the, the growth of your company. Imagine this would have been proposed in China and at the same time see the reactions. Uh, is there a sell-off in the US happening? No it's not but in China there is and this counts all down to the difference in the education and the knowledge about uh, what is happening in both China as well as in the US and well as I mentioned in this video at the time when the Chinese are coming to invest into their own companies I would say this will lift all of the Chinese um, equities and stocks and valuations big time because these people do understand what they're investing in and they are not going to run again uh, away in fear uh, when news around policies or crackdowns are announced uh, because there will be a better understanding and so I think that is the big macro picture in the long term. I could be wrong whether or not this will actually uh, manifest and also to which extent actually the government will allow to make um, investing in also foreign uh, equities um, allowed but I do think that this is at least the other side of the story to the whole Evergrande and Crackdown saga. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, different view. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it and then uh, smash a like and share it and see you in the next one.